Let's now tackle this problem from the 12a, number 22. Let f be the function defined on positive integers. So what does this really mean? Well, let's just take one simple example. For example, we have f of 6, and we look at all the divisors that divide n. So 1, 2, 3, and 6. And what we do for each of the divisors is we multiply by f of n by 6. So we would have 2 times f of 3, and then 3 times f of 2, and then 6 times f of 1. This, this is all equal to 1. So, that's just, now we got that out of the way. I'll just erase the thing. That was just for demonstration purposes. How do we find f of 2023? So, the first thing you might notice is that if you write out for 2023, now there's one way to do this with just complete brute force and... You can be like, okay, 1 times f of 2023 plus a bunch of other terms equals 1. And then you can just directly find each of those terms here by just using the same kind of equation again. And then you can keep going down and down and down. But this is a little bit tedious. So maybe can we find like a little bit smarter way to do this? So the first thing to notice here is what happens when n is 1 in this function? We just have 1 times f of 1 equals 1, i.e. f of 1 is 1. Okay, now what happens if n is a prime? We have 1 times f of prime plus prime times f of 1. What is f of prime? Well, that's what we're trying to find. So we take a look here. This is 1. So we have f of prime, and we know f of 1 is 1, so this is 1 minus p. So the reason we want to find this is because, remember, 2023 20, is 7 times 17 squared. So rather than trying to plug in 7 and 17 right away and I go end, up, end up with some really ugly expressions, let's just deal with variables for now and we'll plug in 7 and 17 at the end. So essentially what we're going to try and find is f of p q squared. 7 and 17 is just like a random number. You can just plug those in later. So we now only found f of p. We're trying to work our way up here because the thing is, if we try to write an equation with f of p with n is p q squared, we're going to end up with PQ, f of pq terms, f of, P, P, uh, f of q squared terms, f of p terms. We want to find, we want to kind of work our way up. We found f of p is 1 minus p. Now what is f of p of q? What is f p squared, let's say, right? Or, yeah, we have 1 times f p squared plus p of p plus p squared f1 is 1. So, um, p times 1 minus p, we get f p squared equals, this is p times 1 minus p, so we have p times p minus 1 and plus 1 minus p squared. And if we simplify this, we get p squared minus p plus 1 minus p squared. That stuff cancels. This is 1 minus p. Huh, that's interesting. These two quantities are literally the same, f of p and f of p squared. Interesting. So now, okay, what if, what if the primes are not the same that we're multiplying? What is f of pq? We can say f of pq plus q f p plus p f q plus p q f one, which is just p q. This sum is one. Cool, so we know f of p, we know f of q. And we're trying to solve for p q. Not that difficult, right? f of p q is one minus Q of P, so that's the same thing as 1 plus Q times P minus 1. And then P F Q, which is the same thing as plus, what would that be? P times Q minus 1, right? We're just inverting the well, F of Q, which is 1 minus Q to Q minus 1, and then minus P Q. And what happens when we simplify all of this? We get 1 plus Q P minus Q plus P Q minus P minus P Q. Cancel, cancel. We get P Q minus p minus q plus 1. And this is just p minus 1 times q minus 1. Interesting. And notice that we can also rewrite it like this. And that's actually kind of cool, right? Because that's just f of p times f of q. Okay, so now we found f of pq. What about f of pq squared? What we're trying to find. This is the hardest one so far, of course. 
So what we do is we just write out everything just like we've always been doing. F of PQ squared plus Q F P Q plus P F Q squared plus what else, what other factors could we have? Uh, Q squared F P plus hmm, P Q F Q plus P Q squared F one, which is just P Q squared. All of this is one. And now we just solve here. We have f of p q squared is well, okay. So this thingy is just going to be q, and we'll actually just notice some really nice cancellation here. I think right. f of q squared is p times one minus q. This thingy is q squared one minus p. p q one minus q. p q squared. Hmm. Never mind. The cancellation is not as simple as I thought it would be. But I think it should be still, okay. Yeah, so take a look here. When we add these two quantities together, we get PQ plus P times one minus Q. And is that, is that useful here? Um, P plus one times, maybe that, that's not that useful because we have Q plus one, Q minus one, and then P. Is there any other smart manipulation? Oh, aha, here. We add these two together. Now that is something that does help a lot because take a look, this thingy is Q squared minus PQ squared. And this thingy is just PQ squared. So they add up to just Q squared. That's, that's nice. What else? Is there any other nice simplifications here? Hmm. Aha, same thing over here. We have Q times one minus P times one minus Q and PQ times one minus Q. So that's Q minus QP. So let's just write Q minus QP times one minus Q, and this is just PQ. We add them up, we get Q times one minus Q. We add up these two quantities, we get Q one minus Q. And then finally we have this P times one minus Q term. So at the end, we're just left with P times one minus Q plus Q times one minus Q plus Q squared. Yeah, that should, mm, that should be good, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then these two things add to Q times Q minus P times, add to Q times one minus Q. These two things add to Q squared. And then we have this P minus PQ term that is left. So now all we have to do is just, you know, simplify just a little bit more and see what we get from here. We have a P and a Q and then times one minus Q. So we can just, oh, that's interesting. We have P minus PQ. Let's just expand. Yeah, I think I'm overthinking this a little bit here. Just P minus PQ plus Q minus Q squared plus Q squared plus FPQ squared is one. So let me, you know, let me move, let me remove that. I think we're running out of space here. You have this quantity over here just by, uh, just by adding up all these terms, right? We see we got, we, we have Q, we have, we have this term, this term, and then this term, we add them all up. Plus this term, we get one. And then from here, we just see, okay, these things, this thing, they cancel. And then we're just left with F of P Q squared equals one minus or one, one plus P Q minus P minus Q. And it turns out this is actually just one minus P times one minus Q. And here it's pretty simple, right? We just put in seven and 17, negative six, negative 16. And our answer should be 96. Isn't it kind of cool how F of P Q squared is just the same as F of P Q and then F of P squared is the same as one minus P. This is actually something really cool and it's known as Dirichlet convolution. It's like, oh, there's a whole field of Olympiad mathematics about, about Dirichlet convolution and these kind of arithmetic functions. But of course, this is beyond the scope of the AMT 12, so I won't go into it too much here. You can check it out if you're interested. The key idea here, we wanna see that, okay, 
there's no need to work directly with 7 and 17. That's just going to be a hassle. Deal, we deal with P and Q. We find F, P, Q squared. And then to do that, we realize, okay, let's just work. start with 1, work our way up to primes, then primes time primes, and then prime squared. And then finally, we can work our way up to P, Q squared, which are what we're looking for. And that's it for this problem. Hope you enjoyed.